Hello and welcome to Do It Yourself Musician. I have the S550 that I won at the auction the other day right here. Um, it's working fine. Um, as you saw in the last video, which I'll link in in the bottom, uh, it was a little more used than I expected it to be when I bought it, but it does work fine. It did, however, have one problem, and that was the uh, mix uh, output jack on the back of this uh, was not functioning. And if I turn the unit around here, I can show you that. This is a mix out jack right here. Uh, one cool thing about the S550 is you have eight individual outs, which is good for a mix down of drums and things like that. But the mix out is sort of the main out, and uh, it's not working, and it's very, very, very loose. And I figure that that's probably just broken off the, the PCB. Uh, the solder joints are probably busted on that thing, so... Um, that's probably why it's not working. So I'm going to go ahead and, and open this unit up and uh, clean it out a bit and also take a look at that jack, repair it, and, uh, and check out the rest of these and see how, how well they're doing. All right, let's get this last screw out of the case. Take the top off and see what we got here. Mm-hmm. Well, that's interesting. Let me bring this over a bit closer and take a look at this. All right, this is the back of the unit over here. This is the bottom. Um, this is the, uh, the SCSI hard drive interface card. Uh, that came with these things. Someone kind of just really uh, kind of botched that, <laughs> botched that in there when they put that in. But that's all right. That's just uh, insulation or, or shielding that broke. The cable's fine. Uh, this next board here is uh, the analog board. I'll zoom out and get more of that in there. Uh, this is basically just the analog I.O. board. Um, you've got all of your uh, your eight connectors here, um, including that mix-out connector, which is right here. And uh, it definitely, I would say that's definitely broken solder joints under there, as much as that thing's moving. Um, and it looks like everything else in this unit is under... Uh, the shielded chassis here. That's where uh, the other stuff. There's going to be a, a board. This this outer case will slide off, and there'll be another board on the top um, that we'll take a look at in a minute. But first, I'm going to pull this board out so I can get to and fix this uh, mix out connector. Okay, I've got the board loose. There was a couple of screws. There was one through the back. Then there's some of those plastic standoffs that I just used the uh, end of this wire stripper to squeeze and push through. Uh, there's still some wiring uh, here, back here. Some wiring back here, connectors that are kind of keeping that board in there. And before I pulled it out, I just wanted to say that, that with Roland products, you have to watch to make sure if you're going to unplug any of these wiring harnesses, uh, you have to make sure that it's actually a plug. Uh, Roland uses a kind of connector 
Um, I'm not sure. I don't think any of these are that way. But they use a kind of connector that looks exactly like a plug, one of these little connectors, but it's not. It's just soldered in uh, to the board. You see, see that a lot on the keyboards, like the older, older stuff, the Roland uh, Junos. Jupiters, even up into like the W30 and stuff, they have these kind of wiring harness and connectors, uh, and the connectors don't actually unplug, they're soldered in, and you've got to be careful not to go pulling on those, thinking it's going to come out and, uh, and break it, you know, so you have to make sure that these are actually connectors before you go to unplug them, and obviously never ever force this stuff, just be really, really gentle with it. I'm going to go ahead and unplug a couple of these that's keeping this board in here and see if I can pull it out and lay it over. Okay, I've got the this connector board out of the S550 and uh, if you look real close right here this is the mix out jack and if you look you can clearly see that that is a broken solder connection and that's why that thing is not working um, the rest of these actually look pretty good but that's definitely that's broken right there so I'll have to solder that back in to get that to work. This board was a little difficult to get out because it has these little clips on it. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what those do. I think maybe it gives a little standoff or something, but that kind of made it difficult to pull this board out. But uh, So just be aware of that. Just always go easy when working on these old things. Don't pull anything too hard. If you find you got to really pull on something, just stop and, and sort of rethink what you're doing. Okay, just wanted to give you a little closer view of that broken uh, solder joint and the mix out connector. And you can definitely see that that thing is toast right there. So I'll just uh, heat that up and add some more solder to make that solid uh, and get this thing working again. All right. Hopefully, this is in focus. Uh, I'm going to resolder this cracked joint right here. I always use a, a good 40 watt plus soldering iron with a chisel tip to get in there and really heat that sucker up and get it done. And you want your solder joints to look just like that, nice and shiny. And I don't think these two are cracked, but I'm going to go ahead and flow them back in there. Close them in there, anyways, just to uh, just to uh, make sure. This is why you need a good hot iron, just like that. And that should be trouble free. I'm just gonna clean up around that a little bit uh, with some alcohol. Uh, and then I'll come back and actually clean the actual contacts with some uh, Q-tip and some deoxid uh, in the actual jacks themselves. Uh, clean it up a little bit and make the audio a little better. To clean out connectors in these old um, instruments, I like to use the deoxid uh, fader F5. And I just use one of these wood Q-tips and spray a little on the end of it. Just stick it in there and make sure those contacts get pretty clean. Try to try to hit the uh, uh, the little uh, knuckle pieces, I don't know what you call them, like the little spring pieces in there that that actually make contact with with quarter inch jack. You try to you can feel those with this Q tip and just try to clean it up. 
but this is definitely the stuff to use is the the deoxit works really good now you can see how how much junk comes out of there all right now I'm gonna take the case off and flip the unit over and and have a look at the circuit board on the the top side and just look for any any issues um, then after that I'll close it up and, and plug it up and see if I can if the mix out is indeed fixed and, and that'll be it for this thing so let's turn it over and take a look Alright, wow. Yeah, this is a interesting setup here. It's pretty typical Roland. Though um this is a very, very uh <laughs> interesting transformer here. Look at this thing, this is crazy. Wow, that's that's very interesting. Huh. I've actually never seen a transformer that looks like that. That's that is very strange. Um it does have an internal fuse that seems to be alright. Like I said, that's very very typical of, of a Roland system to have the AC uh, input a fuse um, then there's this filter things and these couple of caps on each side that's I've seen that in a lot of Roland equipment um, and then the power switch which is uh, remoted with one of these little plastic plastic pusher things uh, that's really really typical of Roland gear from that era and this actual power supply board here as you can see there's really good uh, Japanese caps in these things. You rarely actually find an uh, electrolytic cap in these old Roland things that's, uh, that's busted uh, or bulging um, because they're usually all you know Sanyo, Panasonic, Nichicon, uh, Nippon, Kimikon, some, some good good capacitors. So these things were built really well. Keep in mind that this was a this thing cost over three thousand dollars new, so they didn't cut corners. Um, yeah, this power supply board looks pretty good. It's kind of dirty down in here. I'll try to blow some of that out, um, get that cleaned up. Uh, floppy disk, uh, you know, this one's an early type floppy disk which would be more akin to an Apple uh, than, uh, than an IBM on these so they don't cost too much used uh, it's kind of hard to find one in good shape though but uh, they usually last I like using the disk anyways the, the better card uh, card reader systems for these S550s uh, the the XCF cards or whatever, those things are they're just way too expensive. Um, might as well just run the floppy disk and use the... It does have a SCSI on it, so you can always SCSI a hard disk up to it and just use that, you know. Uh, it works fine, even for technology that's nearly 30 years old. <laughs> and uh, here's the main board. And uh, give you a little look at that. And it's very typical to find these kind of rolling uh, proms. Um, I'm assuming those are proms. I see them in all the all the units. Um, with this old Intel chip is pretty pretty cool here. Um, it's very interesting. Then of course these these uh, they always have rolling. Uh, specific chips in these things. If any, any of those things ever went bad, you'd be hard pressed getting that. I mean, it, that would really 
really run the unit. You can see on that chip there, there's a date of 1985. So that shows you the kind of vintage we're looking at here. Very, very, very old stuff at this point. But still rocks, still, still sounds really good. That old Mitsubishi uh, IC right there, that inline job, that's, man, that's crazy. They just don't make, make things like that anymore. <laughs> There's another rolling homespun thing. Then you got all this stuff down here, which I'm going to assume is some kind of memory for the, the sampler memory and stuff. Um, but just looking at this for general inspection purposes, I don't really see anything wrong with it. It looks pretty good. It's just a bit dirty, as you'd expect. Um, stuff down here, all the connectors are still pretty solid feeling. MIDI connectors and stuff, it all seems fine, I don't see anything. There's a little little control board right there. That board has the RC100 uh, controller on it, as well as uh, input and the phone, uh, the headphone output, output on it. There's all the connectors that go to the front panel. I'm um, probably not going to take that front panel off. Um, there were some buttons that weren't working too great, uh, like these uh, these buttons here. Um, these are real typical of mid-80s rolling stuff again. You know, you'll see these on the, the effects units, the DEP5s and the SRV and SDE units. And, and they, they are actually pretty robust. They're... They do pretty well. Uh, I've never seen many of them broken. Uh, th what happens to them is when the, the unit heats up, uh, they can kind of freeze together. So when you're pushing one button, you're actually pushing and go, another one goes with it and causes it to mess up or it might get stuck in the down position, which this had, this was doing that. It's, you know, they all do it um, just because of their age, I guess, and the way it was designed. I'm just going to take some air and blow out around them try to try to clean some whatever I can get out of them to make it uh, work a little better but it's pretty normal behavior for them to do that so I'm not gonna I'm not really gonna get in there and, and mess with the, the button panel too much right now if it's working there's no reason to take all that apart and get in there and, and goof with that stuff so overall I mean, it looks pretty good to me um like I said, I'm just going to clean it up a little more, put the top on, and uh, put it back together, and, and put it back in the rack, and see if that mix out that I just re-soldered on there, see if that dude will uh, actually function and give me a, a mix output on it, which I'm sure it will. All right. See you in a minute. All right, here's the newly newly cleaned up uh, and repaired S550. I'm going to put it in a rack. And I've got uh, this is a two-pronged power cord for Roland right there. Uh, I've got a MIDI cable. I'll put that on the input. For many, the audio I'm going to put into that uh, mix out jack that was previously broken, so we can test that. And let's just put this up in here. Like that. There we go. Okay, now that it's in the rack, I've got. Uh, the Roland S550 uh, operating system. This is the CD5 uh, version 1.02 in it. I'm going to put that in there and boot her up. I'm going to hold down the number one on the 10 keypad uh, just to make sure that I have front panel 
control. This should do it. Um, that's how you, because uh, these you can control this by the front panel or by the RC100 uh, or a mouse. Um, if you hold down the one on the 10 keypad and, and power it up, um, that's how you make sure that you have panel control of it. And it's going to um, boot up. And it should go into play mode whenever it's finished booting. Oh, sorry, yeah, there it goes. That's play mode there. Uh, and now that that's in play mode, I'm going to try to load up a uh, MKS70 sample disk or a disk of uh, MKS70 samples. And to do that, you hit disk. And right now it's going for a hard disk load, which I don't have a hard disk hooked up, so I have to, to internalize it. I believe I have to push menu to do that. I th yeah, there's hard drive load, patch, hard drive save, setup. Uh, floppy disk load, hard disk load, floppy disk load, load patch, uh, load tones, floppy disk save, floppy disk backup, and that's the system change. So I'm going to take floppy disk load and execute. And yeah, it's loading now. Yeah, all the old rolling samplers do this countdown thing as it's loading up. This is going to be a two disc uh, set. This is uh, the second disc. And like I said, it has some MKS70 uh, piano tones on it, kind of like bell patches and things. Yeah, change the next disc. So let's put the next disc in. And it just starts loading automatically. And after this loads, uh, it should go back into play mode. Uh, if not, probably just push play. But let's see what happens when it gets there. All right, getting closer. Nearly there. Complete. And we'll go ahead and put it in play standard. And let's see if anything comes out of it. Aha! Yep. And that's that bell patch I had the other day. Hope you can hear that. <laughs> so you can see the message light. Sorry, I don't have a keyboard hooked up. I've just got my NPC pads and I'm <laughs> hitting right now. Yeah, so that means that this is totally fixed now. The, the play, uh, the mix out jack on the back that we resoldered it's totally working and I'll tell you this patch here is an example of uh, what happens when you try to convert load a 550 disc onto a S760 uh, this particular patch that I'm playing this bell patch do you hear how it fades out on 760, that tone gets stuck and just continues to play. Um, 
because it, I don't know, something doesn't quite transfer uh, between the samples made on this and the samples made on the 760. That's why it's better to play 550 samples on an actual 550 because it plays it right. Like, obviously, this patch, you know, has some sustain if you listen to it. Then it, then it trails out. On the 760, that particular patch no, doesn't trail out. It just keeps on going for like, I don't know, indefinitely. Um, eventually it kind of gets stuck and I have to to reset it or, or go all notes off on my MX-8 or something to stop it from playing. Uh, but that's a good example. You know, If you're going to use 550 patches, it's good to actually have a, a 550 around to play them. And uh, so, yeah, since it's now fixed and cleaned up and everything looks pretty good with it, I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and just mount it here in the rack, and it's going to live with its uh, younger brothers here. Um, and whenever I get a chance to do some sampling on it, I'll uh, do another video on that. So if you have any questions about old Roland samplers, the S550, the 760, the 330 or anything, just... Uh, uh, leave a comment below. Uh, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. And I'll see you in a couple of days on another video.